Hey guys, so Little Man and I are back. We have Sector 5. We're finishing this off today. Uh, and I'm just going to go through the feats as usual and the teams I'm using. I'm also going to show you the Mando team I'm using for the light side Mando wins because it's it's not different from um, last time, but the disc setup is different, obviously. So I definitely want to highlight that real quick. Um, but before we hop in, I do want to say thank you so much to my patrons. Truly appreciate your support. It doesn't go unnoticed. Okay, let's look at the Sector 5 feats and then I will show you the light side mandos and then we'll hop into the gameplay for Sector 5 specifically. Um, so we have defeat 50 enemy units with Inquisitorious units. Uh, so I really hope you guys have been working on your Inquisitors because they are not going away. Um, and this is honestly a really easy feat to get done especially with the zealous ambition discs because fifth brother and seventh sister can take advantage of those so well um win 14 battles with no tanks in your squad really self-explanatory attempt to inflict blind 80 times and attempt to inflict evasion down 80 times so pretty straightforward we can actually double dip on a lot of this triple dip you can do inquisitors no <coughs> tanks and blind in one you can do <laughs> <laughs> you can do um no tanks and blind in one you can do evasion down and no tanks. look there's a lot of mix and matching you guys get the point okay so let's <laughs> let's look at uh light side mandos and then we will go into the sector five gameplay specifically okay guys so i want to do light side mandos first like i was saying and i'm going to do it on the bad batch node um I know people are also doing it on the bounty hunter node in sector one, the bonus node. So either or, I like the bad batch one though. Those were my discs that I've got set up and I want to use the Mandalorians as if you don't have new bow. So if you have new bow, obviously do as you want with her. Uh, but let's say you don't have her. I like to use a Bo-Katan lead, armor, bam, Sabine, and then Mando. So we're not using any of the new Mandalorians for new bow. Um, the only support on this team here is Armorer. So she's the only one that's going to take advantage of Zealous Ambition. But since she's the one putting out Armor Shred on the enemy, um, it actually works out pretty nicely in my opinion. So you do have to go after um, Rutger here first since he is taunting. And just for transparency, my Armorer is 305 speed and she was going first. So just keep that in mind if you need to do any mod tweaking. Uh, and then obviously you're going to go after Echo next because you want to get rid of him. Even with him pulling the debuffs on you and everything, it's still pretty solid. I like to save Bo's leadership ability for Bam specifically so that he can uh, get the taunt on there. And then that way, if he does end up getting... Um, hit a little too hard or anything like that he can just put damage immunity on himself so it's, it, it'll trigger and it'll be fine um but it's all pretty straightforward you're just going through killing them uh i don't use the beskar armor with me with armor i just use her basic and her second special so the attacks where she's actually doing damage on the enemy because she's again taking advantage of the zealous ambition discs so that she's doing a lot of the damage and we can just kind of come in with anyone else and clean it up and make our way through uh the bad batch node really easily so again three times a day um and you should have it done in about six and a half days to get your light side mando win completion tick thing Okay, so let's look at Sector 5 now. Um, I want to do Inquisitors first. So we're going to do uh, an Inquisitor team that has no tanks on it. And we're also going to get to work on Blind at the same time. Um, and this works really, really nicely against Jedi squads. Uh, so you're going to go in with a Grand Inquisitor lead. And you're going to take everyone except Reva and Ninth Sister because those are your tanks. So leave them at home. Seventh sister and fifth brother are going to milk the crap out of your zealous ambition discs because they are support and healer. Um, and yeah, you are just able to, to go through really cleanly, in my opinion, against Jedi with them, even without Reva, even without Amplify Agony, like it works nicely. And then eighth brother's AoE actually has an AoE blind on it that is... Uh, only for Jedi enemies. So when you're going against a Jedi enemy like this, that's why we're able to work on blind at the same time. Um, and then honestly, I just decided to start AOE, AOEing here and just kill them as soon as possible, just to make sure we could get to the three stars. 
um, and you will be set. So again, that's a full Inquisitor win. You have no tanks on your team. So you're getting uh, five Inquisitor kills, no tanks, and five blind. Obviously, if it takes a little bit longer and you were able to get his AoE off again, then it would be more. But it works to work on uh, three of the feats at once. Okay, so let's say you don't have a full Inquisitor squad. Um, what you can do is go in against a Gene Ocean team. So we're sitting at 10 Inquisitor kills right now. Um, these are the discs that I currently have set up. So I have three Zealous Ambition on this one. This is on the Professor X account. Um, and the main thing is Zealous Ambition here because you're going to take Fifth Brother and Seventh Sister specifically against this, and you're going to use a Trail lead. Uh, so you can go Trail lead. You're going to need a tank. So I like to use Jedi Master Luke as my tank, uh, and you're going to need Watt to force the taunt onto them. Uh, and then you're going to take your two Inquisitors. So again, you want Fifth Brother and you want Seventh Sister because they both will take advantage of the Zealous Ambition discs. And Seventh Sister will assist when Fifth Brother does any uh, attacking. So on the off chance that he does his AoE, for example, and he doesn't manage to kill a target, she could come in and kill it um, for you that way. Uh, but it's really straightforward. So Tank Tech goes to Jedi Master Luke. He's going to AoE just to kind of make sure... Uh, try to get the ability block out there basically and hopefully they just target him that way without doing any aoes um, and then you just kind of sit and wait your turn let them all do damage to themselves uh, luke can't call anyone to assist so there's really no need to do it um, they're all going to keep going after him and then once we get to take a turn they will have done so much damage to themselves from the trail leadership that Fifth brother and seventh sister can just come in and snipe all the kills and you will get six Inquisitor kills this way. So you can see here, we're just going to waste a turn with Watt and then fifth brother can come in and AOE and it's over. So again, that will leave us with six additional kills if you don't have a full Inquisitor squad that way. Uh, you just want to make sure you're going in against the Geonosian team to take advantage of the Treya leadership. All right, so now we're going to go on, on a Karth Old Republic node here. Uh, and we're going to work on no tanks, blind, and evasion down. So you can get three done with one team. Um, and you're going to use your classic CLS Rebel Squad because they are able to do all of the fun things. Um, you're going to get the blind from Chupio, and you'll also get the evasion down from Chupio. And obviously there's no tanks on the squad, so everything there is beautiful. Um, because Chupio is assisting so much, uh, basically every time, as long as he's not dazed, uh, his basic has the evasion down, so you can rack up a good amount by using a CLS squad this way. Um, and then you can just use his AoE if, if you wanted to, his AoE blind, and add in a couple of blinds that way too while you're making your way through. Uh, it's pretty straightforward though. I do try to draw it out a little bit just in terms of uh, having Chupio assist as much as possible, which is why I have like Han do his shrug and like all that kind of stuff so that Chupio can get a few extra hits in and we can get a couple of more evasion down every time in the battle. It really isn't going to make or break whether you win or lose, in my opinion. Um, and then I do try to only basic with him unless it starts to look a little dicey and I want to try and, you know, wrap things up. I do also try to target, you can see there, I switched to the healthier target so that when Chupio assisted, it didn't kill them because uh, it won't count as an invasion down if you land the kill shot first. So you want to keep that in mind while you're doing it as well. And then that way, we've gotten a few evasion down, some blind, and no tanks with one squad. Okay, so... Next one is going in against Padme. It doesn't have to be a Padme squad. I just like to use a Galactic Republic team whenever I see Padme because Padme and Conquest sucks ass. So <laughs> this one will work as no tanks on your squad and then a tick for your Galactic Republic uh, team for your global feats. I'm not double dipping anywhere else. It's just a pretty straightforward uh, go through the motions, kill Padme, get a tick for no tanks, get a tick for Galactic Republic that way. Um, I'm still running those Zealous Ambition discs on this account. So Padme is taking advantage of it since she's a support. If you really wanted to, you could sub out 
Anakin for like Grandmaster Yoda or Shock or something like that. That's another support character. Uh, but I don't personally think it's necessary. And especially since you're not double dipping anyway. And then that way you're just set with your tanks. Okay, let's look at the mini boss. Um, so you need to win with Darth Bane surviving and win without using any Jedi, Sith, or unaligned Force users. So you're going to do this twice, obviously, since Darth Bane is a Sith. So I did swap out my leader's resolve disc for a fortified. I kept everything else the same. So it's still entrenched, zealous ambition, etc. cetera. Um, but I find the fortified helped a lot because Darth Vader will eventually get his merciless massacre off and he will most likely try to do his big hit on Bane. At least that's what I saw multiple times. Um, and the fortified really helped Bane just survive from getting called to death right away from Vader. Uh, so if you have a fortified, I would definitely throw it on. Um, and then in terms of the other characters, I added Treya and Nihilus and Palpatine since they're all support characters. So they're going to take advantage of the um, Zealous Ambition discs and start hitting pretty hard. Uh, pretty quickly. Uh, I chose to link Wampa and Vader because Wampa just gets a ton of bonus protection going and it is annoying to chew through. So I just wanted to zap them to death. But other than that, we're basically just doing as many abilities on Ninth Sister there since, since she is taunting um, and hoping for Treya to get a turn and Nihilus because they are going to hit pretty hard with the Zealous Ambition discs and we can just make our way through. Uh, so you can see here that Vader did do his Merciless Massacre and everyone survives because of that fortified disc and then we get into C's alt and he's just going to fry everybody and, and call it good. Um, so this isn't super clean obviously but it works in, sense, in the sense of Bane uh, surviving, which is really all I cared about. And we can be clean on the no Jedi Sith force user feet pretty easily. Okay. So we'll go back in with that one. Okay. So this is on professor X now, and these are the discs here. So he's got three blue zealous ambition as well as a fortified. Um, and this is just basically using and abusing zealous ambition to get our way through this boss node without any Jedi Sith force users, etc. Um, so we're going to go with the Bamhan Chewy team, even though we don't have the volatile accelerator, it's still going to work. Everything's going to be fine. Uh, you want dash and you want, I took IG 11 cause he's a healer. So he'll take advantage if he takes an AOE. Uh, but realistically it's going to be dash. That's doing the, the killing for you with his AOE just cause he gets to take all of the fun turns. Um, I did choose to shoot Vader at the start. I just wanted to have him stunned and kind of delay that merciless massacre loop from happening. Um, and then we pre pretty much just go into it. I don't want to use Whistling Birds with Bam. I want to make sure I have his damage immunity ability available if needed. Um, and I'm just waiting for Dash to take his turn so that he can do the AOE. Uh, he's going to take advantage of those Zealous Ambition discs and pretty much wipe the board for us that we don't really need to, to worry too much. Um, and IG-11 can do a little bit whenever he takes a turn, but we're just realistically, like I said, waiting for Dash here. So he'll get to take his turn shortly. And the, uh, again, benefit of the BAM being on the squad is having this damage immunity so you're able to just keep your team alive uh, and wait it out here while Vader's hitting everybody and then Dash just kills everyone and it's fine so three stars we're good no force users and it's clean and now we can move on with our lives okay so we're gonna look at the boss here you need to win with Bo-Katan surviving Bo-Katan Mandalore the new bow and no Galactic Legends in your squad so you can do this in one fight um, you can break it up if you want to if you just want to get through it with a GL I don't know which boss is more annoying Bo uh, Padme or um, Maul these are the discs I've got on and then the key thing here is we're using an overcharged health med pack because that's going to give us more health and a frenzy tech because we want to go before Queen Amidala takes her turn. As soon as she takes her turn, she's going to summon her decoy. And then we're going to be stuck behind Mark and Taunt and all of the fun things. And it's just going to be annoying and it's going to be a bitch. And I'm going to throw my phone. So what <laughs> we can do to do this in one fight is you can go in with your Reva lead and Grand Inquisitor. Um, and then you're going to take Seven Sister since she gets to... Uh, assist you're going to want 
watt so you can and you're going to want bow so that she is surviving and the idea here is you're going to have watt put a tech out so that he triggers frenzy and then you will be able to get to six stacks of purge on everyone you're going to start with five because of reva lead and you'll be able to add the sixth one onto queen amidala herself there so we're going to put the tank tech like i said on to uh reva it really doesn't matter what tech you do to be honest with you you're just gonna throw one of them out there to trigger frenzy um and then now you want a basic to add a stack of purge on Queen Amidala and you've triggered that frenzy and I just want to keep hitting her. So now because she's got six stacks, I can torture and then seven sister assists and kills her. So now it's unbelievably easy from here on out. You're just going through and killing the guards. Uh, it's really straightforward as long as you get through Queen Amidala first. So again, you want the health pack because it's going to do extra damage since you're increasing your health that way. Um, and then you want the frenzy tech so that you're able to get your turn out before Queen Amidala takes a turn. Uh, without frenzy, they were going in a ridiculous turn meter loop and it was absolutely insane going ahead of my GLs. And it made me want to throw my phone. So if you can grab the frenzy tech, if you didn't get it in your um, little conquest, pass, path, rewards, chest, whatever you want to call it, they're usually on the scavenger nodes or they're in the conquest store. And uh, they're pretty cheap in terms of uh, conquest and, or conquest currency. And I definitely would recommend using it. And then you can get this feat done and out of the way as easily as possible. Okay, guys, so that's everything. That's all of Sector 5. So we're done the whole thing. For the Light Side Mando feat, you need to do that uh, 20 times. So you want to... I try to average three a day. Uh, so you're looking at about like six and a half-ish days. So if you start on Monday at the absolute latest doing the Light Side Mando feat, you will get it done before Conquest is over. Um, so if you're doing three a day. So just keep that in mind. Uh, otherwise, hopefully this was helpful. If you guys have questions about feats or you're stuck on anything, definitely feel free to ask. Definitely feel free to hop in the H9 Discord server. We're pretty much always in there um, chatting about Conquest. So that's it. Okay, buddy. Say goodbye. And uh, see you for the next, the next one. Okay? Yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. <laughs>